Let's go through our first Arduino sketch. Our sketch is broken up into three pieces. The first part is the initialization part where all of the variables and definitions are placed so that the processor and the program know where it is that you want to uh, make your inputs and outputs and store your variables. The next part is the setup portion. And this is where the various setup operations take place here. It only needs to be run once. And things like setting pins to inputs or outputs are done here. The third part is the loop where your processor will literally loop on this code. So what it does, it starts with the first instruction, the next instruction, the following instruction. When it gets down to the end, it'll hit that close parentheses and loop back up to the open parentheses and start repeating this code over and over and over again. So let's talk about various parts of the code and the window here. We want to connect, make sure we're connected to the board. And you look over here, and the first thing we want to do is you want to select Arduino Uno. That's the type of board we have. And you go to Tools, and the port, and select Serial Ports. In this case, you notice COM6 has the Arduino Uno identified, and that's what we want to uh, select there. OK. In Sketch, you can see Verify and Compile, and a lot of other libraries and things that we'll get to later. The various edit commands that you can work with, and the file commands. You want to make sure you save on a regular basis. Okay. And you can also pull off from here, get a lot of different examples. And again, the best way to learn is by examples. You'll see some digital inputs, analog inputs and outputs, communication routines. And what's nice about the Arduino, all of these things that are already pre-written for you. And there's some sensors. These are NOx sensors. These are just some various external sensors that are in a library. Bar graph, strings. We'll be using strings later on uh, so that you can see what's going on. There's some USB routines various routines that are out here okay and again it goes on and on with different types of library routines that are written a very nice feature of the Arduino in that you can pull in a lot of pre-done work and you don't have to write your software from scratch the check mark here is we'll do a quick verify of your program make sure the syntax or the structure of your program is correct Next one, we'll take this and upload this into your Uno. You can see down here, we connected Arduino Uno on COM6. And then here's a little message area in here. It'll tell you how your compilation program does. You can save your program, open an existing program, or create a new program. Now I keep referring to them as program, Arduino world calls them sketch, sketch and program. They're fairly, uh, they are synonymous. I just get calling it a program out of my head, but years of programming, it's kind of hard to do that. Let's start off with here, in the first part, in the definition, where the int is an integer data type. It tells the Arduino what type of data type we're working with. In this case, it's an integer. We give a variable name of GRN underscore LED for green LED. And we tell the compiler that it's located at the Arduino pin number 2. And then whenever you have a slash slash, it means everything after that slash slash to the end of the line is treated as a comment and not an instruction for the Arduino, but a comment for you, the programmer, so that you can tell what is going on on that line. Again, we repeat the same command, but with a new name for red LED. 
and that's at pin number three. Now, if we wanted to declare some variable space for storing data, if they were doing some computation and calculations, this is where we would put that, and you'll see we'll build on this later on. The next part is the setup portion. This is where you tell your program or your processor which pins are inputs, which pins are outputs, and in this case we're going to be using two pins. So here we have pin mode. This is your first command. Pin mode to the Arduino, and it tells you which pin and which direction. In this case we're setting the green pin, the green LED, which you can see is pin number two, and we're setting it to be an output. Again we repeat a command, we're saying the red LED, which was pin number three, and we want that as an output. Now that we've done that, it's really a good programming method to set these outputs into known states, and we will turn both of the LEDs off by setting their outputs high. If the outputs are high, the LED is off. If the outputs are low, the LEDs are on. Okay, We do that by a digital write command. Again, there's a new command for you. And again, pin number. LED, red LED, which is pin number three, set that high. Green LED, which is pin number two, and set that high. That'll complete our setup, and you can see it started with the open parentheses and ended with the closed parentheses. And the other thing I'd like to point out is every command line, every command line needs to conclude with a semicolon. You'll see that here. next part of the program is our loop. And this, this loop will loop continuously, repeat continuously. Again, there's a digital write command, the pin number, and the state. So we're doing a digital write to the red LED, which is pin number three, and we're setting it low. Then we're going to delay 250 milliseconds. Then we'll do another digital write and we'll turn the red LED off and then immediately following that we'll turn the green LED on and then we do another delay of 250 milliseconds then when we're done we do a digital write green LED turn it off and then we hit the close parentheses the processor will loop back up to the start of your its instruction sheet and start going through the digital writes again and turn the red light on. So we have green light off and red light on, delay of 250 milliseconds, and then those two LEDs will toggle with a 250 millisecond delay. So what I'll do is I can check the software by clicking check. It'll compile the sketch. Does the checking. Okay, everything looks good. Let's scroll up here. And any error messages will come up and in something other than white. Let's go and do a change here. I'm going to go and get rid of the semicolon right there. And let's go do check. Uh oh, there we go, orange. So we can see up here. And it says, in function void loop. So we know we're in this area here. Okay, Expected a semicolon before digital write. So we know that somewhere before a digital write, we are missing a semicolon. I have one, two, three, four digital writes there. So you'll have to get in there and try and find out exactly where that's located. And we can come over here, put that semicolon back in place and away we go there now this is showing you line 22 column 3 back here 22 colon 3 which this would be 22 how do we know that's 22 well we start up there with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 6 7 8 19 20 21 22 
There you go, the 22nd line from the top. Now, instead of having to count all those 22 lines, it'd be kind of nice to display those lines. So I'm going to go to Preferences, click on Preferences, click on Display Line Numbers, and click OK. There we go. Display the line numbers, and you can see line 22, 1, 2, 3. So there's our digital right. That means somewhere just prior to that we were missing a semicolon, which was right here. Try that again. I'm going to go and delete the semicolon right here. And we'll hit a check. Error compiling. We go and scroll up. And here it says 18 colon 3. Expected a semicolon before delay. So there's 18. I can come back up here. Put my semicolon. You can use these to really help you find out where your problems are. So we'll check it. Compiling the sketch. There it is. All finished. No orange error messages. If that's good, let's go and upload this into the Arduino. When it uploads into the Arduino, you'll see the little LEDs, the TX, RX LEDs on the UNO board blinking back and forth. Once that's done, you'll see the red and green LEDs blinking on your board if everything is connected right back and forth, back and forth. Now what I'd like you to do is play with the delays. Change the, change the delays. Change them to 1000. And change the other one to 1000. Recompile and download that into your Arduino. And it should blink at a much slower rate. Once you do that, then start playing with smaller numbers. Try 100 milliseconds delay. Then drop down to 50 milliseconds. Try 20 milliseconds. And then 10 milliseconds on each of those. Then where did those LEDs go from looking like they were blinking to being on all the time with no blinking between them? That does it. That's your first program. Now we'll get on to bigger and better things.